Good morning, good morning. We are being queuing it this morning because I am after some blocks. So just getting these little gray blocks here to do the edging, running from the pond up to where we've done the compost bins. Fantastic camera skills, beautiful. Professional as always. <laughs> Yeah, so these little blocks, these are about the cheapest that we can get. So these are 43p each, these blocks, and we need, well, I calculated that we need about 40 to do the little run, but we're going to get 50. So it's about, well, it's under, well, it's about 20 quid-ish, 20 quid's worth of blocks. Um, that should be, you know, just in case we find we're a few short, that would be just way too annoying. So we're going to get 50 of them and they're always useful for something. Any excess that we've got left over, I'm going to use them to prop up the, the racking in the greenhouse because it started to sink into the, the just its earthen floor under there. So it's just starting to sink. And then that makes it very difficult with the watering. So I'm going to use whatever's left over just to prop that up. So yeah, 50 of these blocks and we should be good. While we're here, I'm obviously gonna have a look at what they've got in the veg department. <laughs> I'm hardly gonna come in and not look, am I? I mean, there's nothing exciting. I've gotta tell you, nothing exciting. There's lettuce and cauliflower, bit of rocket. I'm waiting for them to have the chilies and tomatoes because I want to pick up a sun gold tomato and also a couple of bell peppers. So I've got the Zulu black proper bell peppers, which are just amazing, but I want just, you know, standard red, green, yellow or orange or something like that. Just some really standard ones. And I didn't have any seed and because I only want one plant of each, it's a bit silly to kind of go out and buy a whole packet of seed. So I'm just gonna pick them up when they come into the shop but they're not here at the moment. pound seventy-five for five broad beans. Holy moly. Something I do need while I'm here though is courgettes. Would you believe it? I don't have any courgette seed. So I'm looking for courgettes, although I can't see and I, yeah, oh, they've only got the yellow ones and I really don't like yellow courgettes. Something else I'm looking for is, you know, we just got the taps turned back on at the allotment. So we're using um, the hose again now. The main kind of connector is leaking. So I'm just looking for one of them, but there is nothing even remotely similar here. So I think I'm just going to escape with what we've got. Bricks, bark chips, sticks and screws. Beautiful. Right, we're all loaded up and these sticks are going to be for a new carrot root fly box. That's one trip of about 10 to do and it's not a short walk. <laughs> I'm just going to leave these here, get the wheelbarrow and start going backwards and forwards up the hill with the bricks. Always seems like a good idea when you're going to go and buy bricks and then you remember actually it's not so easy to get them here. <laughs> Okie dokie, that's three trips. I think that's enough to be getting on with. <laughs> so this is the area that they're going along here. I'm going to narrow this path right down that goes around the back of the cherry tree here and the pear tree. It's going to go all the way up to the compost bins. And I'm just sort of slowly nibbling away at the path space that we've got along this edge of the plot because it's quite grassy 
And although I am really very partial to a grass path, particularly barefoot in the summer, it's not a great use of the space. What we've had edging this kind of flower bed up until now is a similar style of block to what we've got, but they're off cuts. I can't remember where we got them from, but somebody must have been doing a driveway because they're all sort of quarter bricks and half bricks. And although that's perfectly well and good and they look nice or whatever, they're almost impossible to strim up against because they've got no real weight to them and they're all odd shapes and sizes and all the rest of it. When I get these blocks in here, it's just going to make it really easy to strim up against. As long as I leave the path wide enough to get the push mower up here and the wheelbarrow around the back, we can strim the edges and it will all be tickety boo and tidy. I'm going to shunt the grass from where it is on the edge of this path up to outside the compost bins so the gap between where they are and where the flower bed is going to start I'll just lay this turf over there stamp it down give it a good water and it should transplant no problem whatsoever Okay, I'm going to stop here for the time being because I'm going to come again from that edge there and then work out where the point needs to be here for the two bricks. But that is one half of it done. And you can see I've pretty much doubled the width of the flower bed in, in quite a big part of this. So I'm really pleased with that. We're going to be able to get loads more stuff in, which is handy because I've got about a bajillion seedlings to go in here, <laughs> including a load of toad flax. So this is where I've stuck the grass. I mean, it looks really lumpy and messy at the moment, but that will settle down, no worries, a couple of mows and it will be beautiful. And I think I'm gonna call it a day with that. Morning, look at this, horse-drawn mowing on the common. <laughs> a couple of years ago, they reseeded this with all like wildflower seeds and everything. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And then once a year, they get the horses in to do like proper traditional mowing and it's lovely. We just pulled up at the allotment and look, all this, like all these teenage boys have come out of the school to watch the horses. <laughs> Sweet. Right, let's go and do some work. You happy girlies? Are you happy girlies? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a bit of a Mills and Rube show in the chicken house at the moment because Flo has gone broody and she's incredibly grumpy. She's just like keep chucking her out to give her water and food in the day and she just stomps around in an enormous rage. <laughs> anyway, it is lettuces today. I am planting out and these are the ones that I sowed. God, it wasn't very long ago, but they've done really well. I'm going to put as many as I can fit into this bed here and then whatever's left over I'll just find kind of little gaps across the allotment where I can put them and you can always pick them as baby leaves if you find they are in the wrong place so I'm not too fussed about that but I want this bed to be kind of like the main lettuce bed to begin with so I'm going to put as many as I can in here 
These are pretty much all heading lettuces, apart from the Valmain, which can definitely be used as a sort of cut and come again lettuce and probably red salad bowl. So the varieties that we've got are the Valmain, the red salad bowl. We've got De Trento, which is a Frankie Seeds one with like a red blush, really crunchy and beautiful. We've got Webb's Wonderful. We have Mazur and we also have Beauregard. So all of them are gonna go into this spot. Okay, well, fab, I got more in there than I thought I was going to, so that's really good. I've given them quite a lot of space because, like I said, a lot of them are heading lettuces, so you need to give them, you know, a bit of room so they can actually form proper heads. But yeah, very pleased with that. Hopefully we will have a whole bed of lettuces very soon. I'm going to water them in with dribbly hose technique rather than turning the hose on full because lettuce seedlings are so pathetic and they're so easily damaged. And if I use the hose on full, I think I'd just blast them out of the ground. So I'm just going to dribble some water over the top of them and then I'm going to go and tackle the carrots. <laughs> I don't know what time the carrot fly comes around. It's probably been early for them, I would think so. So I'm pulling a whole row of these carrots out. This is our carrot bed where we sifted all of the soil into it last year and we put quite a lot of work into it and we're planning to just keep growing our carrots in this same box. I'm pulling a whole strip because we're kind of ready to start sowing more and we've still got all the carrots growing. <laughs> But that's because we did a really late gamble on sowing these carrots. They weren't sown until like October time. And although we will have a go with that timing next year, I really don't think it's a guarantee. We had such a mild winter this winter. They weren't even covered in plastic. They weren't insulated at all. They were just sat here all through the winter. All they had over them was the EnviroMesh and they've been brilliant. And we've ended up with this really fantastic early crop of baby carrots. We've been eating these since the beginning of March. And they've been great but like i say great this year we'll try it again next year but absolutely no guarantee that it will work but to be honest i'm really pleased with them they're terribly pale though aren't they i think that's the variety So on the vlog last week, we picked the first asparagus of the year and already we are inundated. Asparagus is such a phenomenal vegetable like that. You come round, you pick everything like as you're leaving the allotment the day before and you come back the next morning and you've got the same again to pick. It is such a brilliant vegetable. I got quite a lot of questions last week about how long this bed had been established and I'd say it's probably been about eight years. We have a second bed on the go which we only planted about three years ago. And so we're hoping to kind of have long, long time picking asparagus. 
we've got two varieties. This is the green one, and we also have a purple one in here. We've got purple and green in the other bed as well. I really love having that contrast. And what I found in this bed was really interesting was that the green ones, we had a higher success rate of the green crowns taking, but of the red crowns that did take, they're much stronger. So I don't know what that tells you about anything or whether that was just complete fluke on our part, but that seems to be what's happened for us. The asparagus, the red and the green, they taste exactly the same. Um, I wouldn't say you could have any kind of major taste difference between them, but they are just a joy to have both colors on the plate. Like this one here, you see this one? This is a purple one. Like I said, the purple ones are stronger crowns, but they are slower than the green ones. They come up about a week later. But yeah, if I show you, so like green, 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 purple, you can see they really are quite different. Pretty. Good morning, chaps. <laughs> it's uh, really quite early on Sunday morning. Uh, I've I know, Rube. It is, isn't it? Very early. You were very surprised to see me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's quite early. It's Sunday morning and I've managed to get nothing done that I intended to get done this week. Haven't even managed to get those courgette seeds yet. I don't know what I'm playing at, but uh, I'm up here on my own this morning. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's really quiet, completely clear blue sky. We've had some really pants weather the last couple of days. It's been warm, but it's been so gray and so dark. And this morning I've woken up and it's gorgeous again. So I'm going to try and tick some of the things on my list off. I got, actually you can just about see it on the side there, that wood that I picked up at B&Q right at the beginning of the week. I still haven't made the carrot box, which is what I'm going to start with this morning and um, finish my cup of coffee. Get on with the carrot box. I'm going to open up the polytunnel first though because uh, it's been really windy the last couple of days. You know, I'm saying it's really grey. It's also been blowing a gale, like proper gusty and uh, unfortunately I need to replace the door on the polytunnel just because it's done its few years and it was meant to be temporary in the first place so I didn't make it with a great deal of care and it uh, is looking a bit worse for wear at the moment and it's kind of blown inwards so I'm going to open that up uh, try and sort that out a bit let some cool air into the polytunnel because it's probably an absolute oven in there and then let's have a look at what we're going to do about the carrot box oh, I'll tell you what so I just got up here or got into the shed all that kind of thing and I mean the shed needs a massive tidy it's looking an absolute state but I've just noticed that we've got a nest on the ceiling not a bird's nest like a wasp's nest it's only tiny I think it's a wasp could be a bee I will look it up and probably there'll be a caption here telling you what it is because I haven't looked it up yet and I'm just making wild stabbing guesses at what it is but let me show you that first and then I'll go and open the polytunnel <laughs> Right, step this way chaps into the messy shed we have this little chap on the ceiling here and you can see it's got like distinctive wasp slash bee things occurring inside it's very small i'm not worried about it but um yeah i'm i'm guessing wasp nest it's happened so quickly it wasn't there like two days ago but yeah look at this terrible state of affairs in here i really need to get on this also, sad times, one of the pumpkins is gone. I mean, I'll chop this out and see what I can save from it. But yeah, sad times on the pumpkin front. But look at this for a day. Hi, Lily. Hey, small. Look at that blue sky. It's beautiful. When I replace this polytunnel door, I'm going to make it exactly the same way. It's still going to be Velcro, but when I put it together, it was meant to be a temporary fix. And what I didn't do was protect the edges where I was stapling the Velcro onto it. So eventually it's pulling through. Next time I'll put some tape underneath it so that it's a lot stronger. But things are looking good in here. Uh, look at this enormous poppy. This shouldn't be in here. I just didn't have the heart to take it out. And now it's absolutely whopping. Pak choy is all gone, we've eaten most of that. Um, the lamb's lettuce has just gone boof, straight into flour, so <laughs> that's gone. Mustard greens still going fine. The green leaf chicory, I need to get onto eating that pronto because it's getting huge, parsley looking lovely. We have been eating the red leaf chicory, though it's absolutely delicious. Chard is looking so handsome, beauty, beauty. 
Look at the size of those leaves. Whew. It's about five times the size of the stuff I've got outside. Little shield bug. Hello, sir. As she doesn't look that convinced, me putting a camera in his face. He's shy. Mustard greens, we've been working our way through these and the gorgeousness of Gone to Seed Rocket. Beautiful. Yeah, so overall, I'm really happy with what's going on in here. Now we've just got to eat it because, you know, we don't have long until the toms are coming in, especially not Johanna's ones. <laughs> So we are basically clearing out those carrots now. Um, they are, so a couple of them have decided they're gonna go to seed. So yeah, we're just taking them all out and we'll just eat them as we go. So I've taken that box off. I'm not even gonna put it back over again. Like carrot root fly, if it gets to these carrots, it's not the end of the world. We're gonna be eating them within a week. So just taking that off so I've got, I can access it and things. Because we've got the single bed that we're using as a carrot bed, um, we need to clear it before we can plant some more and we need to sow some more carrots. Hence, we're kind of just like taking them all out now. But yeah, so the box that I'm going to build over the top of this is going to be Enviromesh, a bit like the one that I've just taken off, except it's going to fit better because that is our half bed one that just goes on our raised beds. And it's going to be for the leeks this year. So, you know, last year I did uh, a whole bed of leeks because I got well overexcited sowing them. Well, this year I'm going to rein it in and just do the half bed like normal. And that's the box for the half bed of leeks because it's got the height for the leaves. So <laughs> that's already a sign, so we can't have it over the carrots. So I'm gonna build one specifically for the bed that we've got the carrots in, which is, you know, the slotted bed, the old compost bin bed, one of them. And what's quite nice is because it's got the cross sections at the side, you know, where they slot in together, the wood that I've bought is just gonna kind of sit in that. So it's just gonna sit really nicely over the top. Yes, and it will also give us a bit more space down here because because I've blocked off with the barbecue and that kind of thing. Can you see? Like this area is all uh, blocked off now, so we can't walk that way. And where the massive, massive EnviroMesh box was over the carrots kind of blocked off the path going that way. So you had to go all the way around the outside to get to the shed. Um, I say all the way around the outside. What am I talking about? It's not a massive detour, is it? It's like three meters one way or three meters the other way. But now there's a direct route. <laughs> So anyway, that is my first job to get done this morning. Other than have a chat to you girls, huh? That Rube is so shouty this morning. I think she's just well surprised that I'm up here this early because normally like the last week or so we've been coming up sort of lunchtime-ish and then from there and uh, yeah, nine o'clock start girls. Quite a shocker, wasn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately, because I'm filming on my phone, you are also my calculator. So I've got to turn the camera off, do the calculation. <laughs> See you in a second. So I was going to do it 65 high, but if I do it 60 high, I can get all four legs out of the same piece of wood, which seems like a much more sensible option. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I mean, 65 centimeters, that's that's bigger than the one that we've got. The one we've got is about 62. So I kind of went up, but I'm gonna go down instead and then it all fits.
okay, just get the last two bits on the bottom. I don't have quite enough of the same wood, but I've got a couple of these strips left over from a previous project, so no dramas. This is really strong and it will be even stronger when I get the EnviroMesh on because the EnviroMesh is um, plastic and it's really quite strong, like you can't rip it or anything. And once it's really taut over this and stapled down, it will be solid as a rock and last for many years, hopefully. There we go, fits like a glove, perfect. Now all we gotta do is eat the carrots that are in there and get some more sewn. Okay, that is, ooh. Where I broke this, uh, where I broke the top of this stand the other day, it's being quite annoying. <laughs> I keep filming and they go, don't, <sighs> never mind. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I was going to say, that's part one out of the way. I can't cover it because I need, uh, I need mum's help. And at the moment, she's not capable. <laughs> Her back's playing up again. So uh, I can't, first of all, I've got to strip the EnviroMesh off an old frame and I need like two people, you need at least one person to stand on the thing while somebody else pulls. So I can't do, can't get it off. And also the new stuff, even if I was gonna sort of crack open some new EnviroMesh, which seems like a waste of the old one. But even if I was gonna do that, I need somebody to help me like tension it as I'm stapling it and hold it. So that's as far as I'm gonna get with that cage today. But I'm quite pleased with it. It's really solid. It's a lot more solid than the other one, the one that I took off, because that one was made with incredibly thin batten around the top and really fat legs so it's a bit um bit uneven whereas that one's all kind of the same so it's a bit more stable but yeah much better size much better size and now you can walk around the back of it which is because that three meter detour was just unacceptable <laughs> yeah so next thing i've got to do i have got some bits and pieces to plant but i'm thinking i might just sit and have another cup of coffee because it is magnificent up here this morning and what I'm supposed to be doing is like quick fire, doing a bit of filming up here and getting as much of the sun as I can. And then I've got to edit this afternoon. So I'm going to be trapped inside. Yeah, I think it's going to be another cup of coffee. I've got so much to do. I'm just standing here I'm in the shed door, like looking out over the empire. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's so much to do. The field beans need chopping down. Could do that, I suppose. We're going to leave some like we tried to do last year, but it didn't really work out. We're going to try that strategy again to see if we can get any of the field beans because they're um, supposed to be quite delicious just like tiny tiny broad beans and really good for drying so I think we're going to leave some of those and I'll chop the rest down. Got asparagus to pick, beetroot to plant, sweet peas to go in, uh, loads of stuff to do. I mean I'm so behind on the sewing I can't even begin to tell you. I don't know what it is. I felt really organized about this year early on. Um, and January, February seemed to just go on forever. Like I couldn't wait for March to appear. And then March appeared and went past in an absolute flash. I don't know what happened to March. And now it's the end of April. So <laughs> I'm basically in the same spot that I was uh, at the end of February. Apart from a bit of basil well, here, here and there. <laughs> oh, but I've still got the rest of the bricks that I need to finish off that in the back of the car, but the car's at home and mum's not driving up here. So uh, they're just gonna have to stay there. And that project's half done. So I've got half done carrot box. I've got half done thing around the side of the pond. Like, I've got lots of half done jobs at the moment, which is annoying. But I think the next thing is going to be, I'll plant some beetroot out because that's looking like it really needs it. The beetroot and the sweet peas are waiting patiently over here, ready to go in. But look at this, we've got so many poppies everywhere. Over here, it's just hilarious. It's like a poppy carpet. <laughs> there are so many of them. It's really annoying. It's right in the middle of the path. I'll see how many I can leave, but yeah, most upsetting. Look at them all around the bin as well. Hey girls, it's a bit of a poppy paradise you've got here, isn't it, whirly whirly whirlies? Yes, it is whirlers. We've also got this tree spinach seedling that's come up in here which is quite handy because I've run out of seed for them and they're popping up all across the allotment so I'm just kind of like singling out the best ones and I will move them into a bed shining pink actually to make myself feel a bit better I'm going to show you some of the things that I have done not on camera you know just to so I have done something I promise I have been doing something so I planted some oh so actually we've had a bit of a disaster 
So the greenhouse, we didn't come up here. Um, actually, I did come up, but only just to like check on the girls' water. I didn't come up and do anything. And it was quite late in the afternoon and the uh, greenhouse had reached to like 52 degrees and fried everything. So we've lost a lot of stuff, unfortunately, but some of the parsley and the chives survived and I've planted them out. I've got them out of the oven and I've planted them next to the uh, barbecue. So they are down here in this bed. I was definitely gonna put the chives in here. It wasn't gonna put parsley in here, but hey ho, that's all well and good. The poor things, I mean, these chives have greened up so fast. I'm so impressed. They were basically all like that, like crispy fried chives. Nice. I got some rocket in here. So I would normally just direct sow rocket, but I happen to have a pot of it. So I've kind of put that in on this side of the bed. The lettuces, this is the ones I planted. They've mostly survived. A couple of them have been dug up though. You can see something's been like rooting around in here and they've lifted up my cover, which is really annoying. Like, it's got all caught up on a hook. I don't know, probably badgers nosing around for wormies in the compost. But you can see they are looking all right in there, quite happy. Actually, this plastic thing, every time I show it on camera, somebody asks me where I got it from. And I'm really sorry, I have no idea. And they don't seem to make them anymore because I would love another one. These were those lettuces. You remember the ones that I rescued out of the greenhouse before that were really sad and they had their roots basically completely eaten off? This is them. They've done fantastically. Peas are coming on nice. And this is where I put a lot of the spare lettuces that I didn't plant out the other day. You can see some of them. <laughs> raging success there that's like dampened off that is a goner but there are some in here which are quite uh healthy looking they look like they're going to take which is nice we never normally use this patch of ground under the mulberry tree for anything so it'd be interesting to see if they grow but this this boys and girls is the very sad thing this is oh well i've, I've just thrown some screws in here but this was my toad flax seedlings crispy fried toad flax seedlings i do have some more seed though so i'm just going to start again but sad times these as well, these are my arismium cuttings that are just completely fried, dead, dead, dead. Miraculously, one of the cornflowers looks like it's greening up a bit, uh, which is just a miracle. But basically, yeah, sad times, sad times. Something that's not sad times, the green chicory that we had growing in this bed last year has self-seeded, ignore the stunted field bean. These chicory seedlings looking gorgeous. I'll probably have to transplant them somewhere else though, because this isn't what I was planning to do here. <laughs> but that's these guys, that is baby green leaf chicory, these ones. So that's exciting, got some self-seeded ones of them, which is nice. But yeah, bit of a disaster, all those fried plants, which is a shame. It's a shame, it's a shame, right. What is next? It is going to be the beetroot, I think. Now I've just got to find a bed to put it in. So I was going to put them further up this way, like right at the end. Um, so this is what the child's looking like outdoors. Looks all right, doesn't it? And uh, oh, 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 I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what, chaps, look at this. <laughs> we have a broad bean, a baby broad bean. <laughs> They're absolutely covered in them. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Won't be long. There's another little chap. Yeah, beautiful. But what was I doing? I was doing beetroot locating. Um, yes, yeah, so I was going to do it up in that bed with the green bin on it, but we've got some pretty good looking spring onions in here and there's various other bits and pieces and it would mean I'd need to kind of clear it and mulch it. And yeah, these are looking really nice. I'm quite pleased with them. Actually, as I'm walking around, I'm just getting excited, like showing you things, which I shouldn't do because I'm going to do a plot tour uh, this week, like Friday. Um, <laughs> so... I'm giving away all the surprises. Yeah, I'll stop. I was just gonna show you the gooseberries, but I won't. Now back down the other end. I'm gonna plonk them in here, I think.
I'm actually just sat in the polytunnel. I've been thinking about where to plant the sweet peas out and I can't make a decision. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do is pick something to have for lunch from in here, go home, cook some lunch. Mum's at home waiting for lunch as well, so I'll do that. Um, and then I will do some editing this afternoon and then probably join you for a glass of wine <laughs> when I finish the main editing of the video. It seems like such a shame. It's been crappy weather all week and now it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, to be honest, I could bring my computer up here and do a bit of editing. I can't do any like voiceovery stuff up here, but I can do the main edit. Right, what am I gonna have for lunch? What do I think? Maybe it's gonna be charred. I think it might be, yeah, I think it's gonna be stuffed pasta shells with chard and mozzarella. I've got a bit of tomato sauce left over from um, spaghetti and tomato sauce. So sadly not real tomatoes. I mean, cat tin tomatoes, you know, soon, soon we'll have the real stuff. But uh, at the moment it's tin tomatoes, but I've got, yeah, I think I might do that. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what, that little bug that was on there before, I've just noticed there's loads of them all over the chard. Hello, this is the guy who I was talking to earlier. We've got another chap up here. Hello. There's another one over this side somewhere. Yep, there he is. Oof. And there's loads of them, look, they're all in there. Actually, some of these, they're just starting to bolt, you know, up the centre, so I'm gonna take out a load of centres. Take them home, have them for lunch. Wonderful. <laughs> I think that's about me done for this morning. It's definitely lunchtime. <sighs> what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. and another week goes sailing by. <laughs> so now I've got the beetroot in and the lettuces in, I'm gonna sow the next lot of them. Hopefully we're gonna eat through a lot of those carrots and then I'll be sowing more carrots. I've gotta do some leeks, I've gotta do turnips, I've gotta do chard, I've gotta find some courgette seed from somewhere. Um, I think I know where I'm gonna go. There's a little shop down the road here, which is so sweet. I have to take you there, actually. I haven't, I haven't even been in there with you, but it's called Camden Plant Rooms. We're not in Camden, we're in uh, Richmond. But uh, Camden Garden Centre is a garden centre up in Camden, surprisingly enough, clues in the name. <laughs> 
um but yeah so they've got that and then they've just opened like a little uh like plant shop just down the road from me like literally on the next block and they have loads of seeds in there so i'm going to nip in there pick up some courgette seed so they're going in this week also i'm going to sow the proper cucumbers you know i've got like the big cucumbers that are growing away like triffids downstairs but they, they're never going to go up to the allotment. They're just going to stay here and we'll eat what we can off them, early cucumbers and stuff. And I will get some proper ones sown, which are the ones that are going to go into the greenhouse later on. They'll be going out about sort of like the end of May. Um, the squash, winter squash is going to be, I'll talk to you about this next week. But you know how um, the one that we've got in the shed has gone off. But you know what? Like We didn't grow a whole lot of winter squash last year. We had what mashed potato squash. We had some Marina de Chioggia. We had a couple of Crown Prince, which is what that one is. We haven't eaten them. We've eaten a couple of them. We just haven't eaten that much of them. So I think I'm going to massively reduce what I'm doing next year. I think I'm just going to do Ijikakuri and probably Crown Prince. But I haven't made a decision on that. I'll discuss that with you next week when I'm actually having to sew them. <laughs> when I'm having to make a decision, basically. But something I do have to say is that last week was Easter and I ran a little competition for the people who have joined me over on Patreon and we did an Easter egg hunt. You may have noticed that there were sort of Easter eggs randomly placed throughout the video last week and the winners were Roxanne, John, Sheila, Lucas, Jackie, Joe, Ashley, Leanne, Charlotte, Amanda, Kirsty, Kelly, Rowan and Kathleen all found all the easter eggs however special mention has to go to leanne and john who i don't know they've obviously got like eagle eyes because they both found way more easter eggs than i thought i'd put in there <laughs> turns out it's just me i'm not very good at putting an easter egg hunt together because uh i thought i had five i'd carefully placed five easter eggs in the video turns out that actually i'd put loads more in because they were just kind of like in the background of stuff and i hadn't realized so yeah i think they found eight or nine different sightings of the easter eggs and we're talking like slithers of easter eggs in the shot there was also a cricket ball lying on the ground in some of the shots which did confuse some people they thought that was also an easter egg but i hadn't even seen it until somebody was like oh there was a red one at this point I was like, what? i didn't even have any red ones okay it was a cricket ball anyway there is going to be prizes easter egg prizes but um i haven't worked out what they're going to be yet so you've got to give me a little bit of time on that but i've got all your names noted down and who got what and who spotted how many so yeah that is that news of that will will be passed to you through patreon but yeah so long video again this week <laughs> sorry about that chaps it uh, has been a bit of a weird week of sort of half doing things half did the bricks half did the carrot box half did lots of things i think it's probably because it's just been me at the allotment really mum hasn't been up there doing anything so i keep sort of starting jobs and then you need two people to finish them and then there's just me so i've got a lot of half jobs to finish next week hopefully mum's going to be back on form next week so she'll be back up there and that's about it i think i mean i haven't looked i'm not very good at keeping track of the dates i'm so lost this year um but i think by the time next vlog comes out, it's going to be May. And then there's going to be planting the beans. Last year I planted the beans in April, but I'm going to wait until beginning of May um, this year. Not only because there is such a traffic jam of things that need to be sown, but uh, yeah, they grow so quick once they're in the ground. I'm going to do that and I've got quite a few interesting ones to try this year. So... Yeah, it's all go chaps it's all go i think what's happened is i've had two years like all of us we've had two years where there hasn't been any kind of any major social engagement to partake in and i've got used to kind of being in that place and now everything's opened up and there's things to do and people to see and you know and there's just not time for that <laughs> i can't do that and keep on top of the sewing <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to say cheers and I will see you next week. Wish me luck on the sewing front.